Hey students, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how I make this speed racer game in Scratch. Let's take a look. I click the green flag and I'm using the arrow buttons only in my game to control my speed racer racer car, which you see there. I'm moving around a track. There are actually three tracks, easy, easy, medium, and hard. And when the car goes onto the green grass, anywhere on the edge or in the middle of the screen, it slows down drastically and stops. So I've got to avoid the green grass. Now, when I move around here, you can see I'm uh, either pointing in one of four directions, up, down, right, or left. And when I pass the uh, little starter uh, spot there, the um, finish, it's called finish line, um, then it changes from one backdrop to the other and to get harder as we go along. And we can see this, I'm not a very good driver, so hey, stay out of my way, right? Um, and here we go, oh, trying to get around here, and then when I get here and I finally get across the finish line, uh, then it will say game over after a second, and it'll tell me what my total time was for going around the track. This other timer here in the upper left corner, that's a, a timer that goes continually, you can't start or stop it. Um, but you can take the time from that and add it together and find out what you got for your total time. We see I had three laps, and it also tells me what my total time was here in a little uh, talk bubble. So this is the basic game or the game um, that we're going to do for this next assignment. It's going to consist of two parts, two videos to complete this. Plus there'll be some things um, that you're going to have to figure out how to do on your own. All right, let's get started. Okay, for this assignment, I have provided a starter file. You'll have to go to the Moodle for our class and come down to where you see resource file and you'll see this speedracer.sb3 file. You should right click on it and say save link as, now, this is on a PC, and it'll allow you to save it to your preferred location. I'm gonna go to my desktop and save it there, speedracer.sb3. Next, let's go over to Scratch. Okay, here we are in Scratch. Let's click on the create button to create a brand new project. When it does that, uh, we'll come in and get rid of the cat. We don't need the cat. And then we come over to the file menu here, choose file, load from your computer, and go find that scratch uh, file that we just downloaded from the Moodle. I've gone to my desktop. Sure enough, there's the file, speedracer.sb3. Let's open it. It'll ask you if you want to replace the contents of your current project. Say yes. All right, that's really easy. Now what we've done is I've provided you with a start file that includes the backdrop uh, for the stage. And if I choose the stage here and look at its backdrops, I see that there are three racetracks, easy, medium, and hard. I provided this to make this project a little easier. You don't need to create your own backdrops. However, if you don't have access to the Moodle because you're not in my class and you're just watching this on YouTube, you could easily create three backdrops for your stage that looks something like this. It's just important that you use the same green color for the background in all three racetracks because you're gonna use that color to control the movement of the car a little later in the game. All right, let's get going. Let's look at the code view for the stage. We see that some code has already been added when the green flag is clicked, we see that the backdrop is set to the easy backdrop. And when we uh, press the space key, we go to the next backdrop. Let's just test that real quick. We can see when I press the key, I can switch backdrops. Great. When you first open up this project, you're going to see that you have the finish line already included and these little instructions that say use the arrow keys to race and you have the backdrops and that's all that's provided in the starter file. You're going to have to design your own race car. So what we're gonna do is to design our own sprite, we're gonna put our mouse over, choose a sprite, come up, choose the paint option so that we can create our own race car. Now it's important that you understand that you are designing your race car as if you are looking down on it from top, okay? It's a top-down game. I suggest you just use some simple shapes like these to design your car. One thing to know is that when you create a shape like this, of course you can change its fill to whatever color you want. And then you can also, one thing I like to do is use the second arrow key here and select the object and then I can easily adjust the corners and the shape of the car uh, of these basic shapes. And I think that looks a little nicer and you have more control over your design. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and design this car real quick in super fast speed. Go ahead and watch.
okay, I have a finished car. Let me go out and zoom out a little bit. You see something like that. Uh, again, there's tools here for zooming in. If you want to see what you're doing, uh, you can change the colors here, give outlines. It's important that we um, now name our costume. I'm going to call this the up costume because the car is point, pointing up in this particular design. Then uh, once you've designed the car once, you don't need to design it again. You can simply make copies of it. So I'm going to right click here, duplicate. I'm going to choose the arrow key here, click and drag around the entire design and then find the rotation button here. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees to the right. And now I'm going to rename this car right because it's pointing to the right. Then I'll right click on that, duplicate again. You with the arrow key, select the entire car, take the rotation button, rotate it so it's pointing down. You see what I'm doing here. Now this will be called the down car. One more time, duplicate, select the entire car and rotate it one more time, 90 degrees, so it's pointing to the left and name this car left. Now I have one car design that has been duplicated three times and I have named them properly up, right, down, and left. It's important at this point that you hit the Save Now button. Whenever you make a lot of changes to your game, it's good to save it regularly. One more real important thing to do is to make sure the center point of your car is in the center of the screen. To do that, select the arrow key, select the entire car, move it off to the side a little bit, and you should see this little gray circle with a hash mark in the middle of it. That is the center point of your sprite, and it has to be directly in the center, lined up in the center of your car. If not, you'll have problems with your game later on, so check that. Let's go back to the code view for our car. We'll notice that whenever we create a sprite, it's given a name like Sprite 1. We want to give it a real name, so let's select the name there, and let's just call this Racer. We also see that our car here in the screen is a little bit large. Let's set the size to 30. Now we're ready to code our car. The first thing you do, come over and choose an event block when green flag clicked. Make this a little bit bigger so you can see it on screen. When the green flag is clicked, this is when the game first starts. We want to set our racer up. Let's go over to the looks area. And when the game first starts, we want to switch the costume to the down costume so that we are facing down. So if I hit the green flag now, we'll see our car is facing down. Next, I want to set the X and Y location of the speed racer car right over here above the finish line, right in the middle of the track. And so to do that, we're going to go to motion, find set X and set Y. And we'll see that because the car is placed there at 186 and 42, it's already automatically filled those values in for me in my game. Now, no matter where the car is at the beginning of the game, when I click green flag, the car will pop back over to this position and be facing the right way. We're going to control the movement of our car with variables. So let's go create those variables now. Go to the variables section. Click on the make a variable button. Make sure you don't choose make a list. That's a different thing. It's different than a variable. So make a variable. Click that. We're going to call it x speed for the first variable. Click OK. Click make a variable again. Y speed. These two variables will control the velocity or speed or motion of our car on the X and the Y axes of our racetrack. Now we're back into the code view of our car. We're going to take out two of these set blocks and place them in here. Uh, you need two of them, one to control X speed and one to control Y speed. So let's change the second one. They both should be set to zero. When the game begins, we don't want the car to be moving, so X and Y speed should be set to zero. Now we're going to create another block. Go to the event uh, palette, choose when green flag clicked. We want to find under control a forever loop. Bring that out. And now we're going to go to the motion tab and we want to change the X and Y location of our car. And uh, this is what's going to make our car move. So again, find change X by and change Y by. Now be careful. There is a set X and set Y, but that's different. We are changing, not setting the value of the car here. 
And we're not going to change it by a set value of 10. What we want to do instead is go back to our variable section and find the x speed here and the y speed here. And make sure you don't mix, mix up your x's and y's. Change x by x speed and change y by y speed. Now if I test this and I'll, I try to move my car, still nothing's going to happen because we have not yet set up our key presses. The key presses will be used to change the values in x speed and y speed, which will then cause the car to start moving. Okay, we're still in our racer sprite in the code view for that. We are going to add another event when green flag clicked. Let's add another control block, a forever block. We use a lot of forever blocks when we're making games because whatever code we put inside here, we want it to be checked uh, over and over and over again throughout the continuous play of the game in order for it to work. So a lot of times we use forever blocks. Inside that, we're going to go under control, find the if block, and pull that out, put it inside forever. Now, we want to sense the key presses. So we're going to come in and find key pressed and place it in here. We want to change this spacebar key press to the down arrow. We're going to do the down arrow first. If we press the down arrow on the car, we want to first change the look of the car and switch its costume, switch its costume to the down costume. Now we want to go back to our variable section and find the change by block. Now when the car is moving in a downward direction, it's changing on the y-axis, and so we need to change x speed to y speed. It's also going in a negative direction. Remember, uh, when you go down, you're going in a negative direction. When you're going up, you're going in a positive direction. So we need to change this from the value of 1 to negative 0 0.2. We don't want to move too fast, so we'll make it a decimal number. Now if I test this, and I press the down arrow, my car will move in the down direction. Now, none of my other key presses work, but this will work for this particular direction going down. Okay, to make this easier, I suggest you select your if block, right click on it and duplicate it. And when you do that, you'll get another if block, place it underneath the previous one, make sure it's not inside that if block, right click again, duplicate again, place that underneath this one, and make your way down, right click, duplicate, and place it underneath that. So when we're done, we have four if blocks inside the forever loop. Each one is for a different key press. Now we need to change the key presses. Down, let's change this to up. Let's do the up and down first, and then let's do the right and left next. All right, now we gotta go through and look at what we're doing for each of these key presses. When we switch the cost, when we press the down arrow, we're changing to the down costume. So now we need to change here to the up costume, here to the right costume, you get the idea. And fourthly, when we press the left arrow, let's go to the left costume. All right, that'll work great. However, we still need to change the values here in our change blocks. Uh, for the up and down, we're changing the Y speed. So for, again, when we're going down, we're going in a negative direction, but when we're going up, we're going to go in a positive direction. So let's change this negative 0.2 to positive 0.2. In other words, get rid of the negative sign. And we're going in a positive direction will make us go up. Next, let's go ahead down to our right arrow press. And we're going to no longer be changing Y speed. We now want to change X speed for both of these last two if blocks. Again, the Y speed handles up and down motion and the X speed handles left and right. So if we're going right, again, right is a positive direction. So let's change this to 0.2, get rid of the negative sign. And when we're going left, we'll leave it at negative 0.2 because we're going in a negative direction when we're going left. All right, that should do it. Let's save this and let's test it on the big screen. Going down, I press I'm going down, I go up, it changes the costume, goes up. That works great. Now when I press the left arrow, it should go that way, and the right arrow should go back the other way. Now, we'll notice that even when you're not pressing the key, it still kind of floats. And that's a special feature of what we're doing here because as you can see up here, in X speed and Y speed are visible. Uh, it's still got a, a, a 0.8 value for the Y speed. It's a positive value and that means it's slowly going up. And so until you get back to zero for both the X and the Y, 
it will continue to move one way or another. It creates a kind of momentum to the motion of your car, which is kind of an interesting feature. Okay, that's it for step one of this project for Speed Racer. There are some extra things you could add to this, and I'd like you to figure them out on your own. But let's take a look here real quick. This is what I call the throttle function. Uh, what this does here is it never allows the speed of the car on either the X or the Y axis to get over eight. So the X speed, if the X speed ever gets greater than eight, then you set the X speed to eight. And that throttles or keeps the speed from getting too great. Uh, you can see I have two uh, if statements for the X speed axis. Uh, I have to check if the speed is greater than eight or if it's less than negative eight. And in each case, I would set its speed either back to eight or negative eight. And then a little further down for the Y speed, similarly, if Y speed gets greater than eight, set it to positive eight. If it gets less than negative eight, then set it back to negative eight. Again, the effect of this will never allow the speed on either the X or Y axis to get greater than positive eight or, or less than negative eight. And that way it kind of keeps the car from going too fast. Okay, which can cause it to fly right off the screen. This is an optional, uh, an optional feature that you could add to your game, and uh, that'll do it for step one of Speed Racer.